<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches, back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Here's the breakfast that brings cheers from coast to coast. The breakfast that wins praise from many a He-Man Hollywood movie star, too. It's swell-tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk and fruit. These king-size, ready-to-serve premium grains of rice or wheat are shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Tomorrow, sure, try this thrifty deluxe breakfast treat. You'll cheer, too, for Quaker Puff Rice or Quaker Puff Wheat. Lightning split the heavens and thunder echoed from the hills. Rain came down in torrents in one of the heaviest spring storms that part of the Yukon had ever known. Despite the storm and despite the fact that it was well past midnight, two men worked by lantern light just inside the entrance to a tunnel halfway up a hillside. Hurry up, Oregon. Hurry up and get that digging done so as I can set this blasting pile. Here, you take the pick, Trigger. You don't like the way I'm digging, you dig it yourself. He didn't get sore about it. Yeah. Enough to make anybody sore working on a knife like this. It's dry here in the tunnel. We gotta get back to town. We'll be half drowned by the time we get there. Well, maybe that hole's deep enough. Now let me see. Yeah, that'll do. Give me a hand with this keg. We'll roll it right in there, and the blast will be set. But what's the plan? What's Calhoun after? This old mine was worked out when Calhoun bought the property. Yeah. Calhoun sure got stuck with it. Does he aim to start operations again? Not exactly. But he does aim to cash in. You see, he just found out that Doc Forsythe is $10,000 cash money. Oh. That's what he's after. Now, let's get that keg in place here. Yeah. <laughs> the storm raged on through the night. It was around three o'clock in the morning when Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, found the hillside cabin. Both had traveled far that day. They were nearly exhausted, and the cabin, though crude, was much to be preferred over an additional hour of wading through ankle-deep mud to reach the town. In the cabin, Sergeant Preston found dry underclothing in his waterproof pack and put it on. He hung his sodden uniform before the fire to dry then lay on a straw pallet and went to sleep. The fire burned down to glowing embers and the storm subsided. King wakened at daybreak, but when he saw his master still sleep, he went back. There was no cause for alarm, no reason to sense the grim peril that impended. High on the side of Rock Mountain, three men reined up near the mouth of the old tunnel. Two of the three had been there the night before. All right, boys, get going. Come on, Oregon. Let's shoot off the fireworks. Right. Race Calhoun, handsomely dressed and coolly confident, sat in his saddle and watched. In a moment, an explosion rocked the ground and jarred Sergeant Preston and his dog from sleep. Rocks of every size pounded the side of the cabin as the Mountie hurried to the window. Looking out, he saw the rain of stone that threatened to engulf the cabin. We'd better get out of here, King. A rock as large as a man's head bounced through the window, striking Preston a glancing blow on the temple. As the Mountie fell unconscious to the floor, a boulder larger than the others struck the cabin squarely, and the weakened side collapsed, bringing down the rafters and the roof. (laughs) 
Grace Calhoun, high up on the hill, was unconcerned about the cabin's destruction. Good work, boys. Now shoot the gold dust into that newly exposed ground. I'll go back to town and get Doc Forsythe. Right. Get up there. Come on. Calhoun found Doc Forsythe sitting on the small porch of his home. Doc, for a good many years you've wanted to build a little hospital here in Bald Rock. Well, you know how it is, Calhoun. Folks around here need a hospital. Just a little one where I could take care of three or four people that are down with serious ailments. But money's scarce. That is money for a hospital. Well, Doc, this morning bright and early, a couple of my men were investigating my gold claim on Rock Mountain. Mm. You sure got stuck with that piece of real estate, didn't you, Calhoun? Uh, uh, I thought I was, but it's proved different. No. You don't mean to say you've struck it rich. I'll leave that for you to decide. Now, let's saddle your horse. I'll show you gold to be had for the taking. The kindly old doctor accompanied Race Calhoun to Rock Mountain, where he was shown fresh earth in which tiny specks of gold gleamed. There she is, Doc. Now we'll just shuffle up some of that stuff and take it in for an assay. And you can judge for yourself whether or not this claim's going to be a good buy for you. Well, we'll see, Calhoun. A couple of hundred yards downhill in the ruins of the shack... The great dog king nuzzled the face and shoulders of Sergeant Preston, who lay flat on the earthen floor, pinned down by heavy timbers. There was but little space beneath the roof that had fallen to a crazy angle. I guess I'm pinned down. Heavy timber across my back. I can't move it. Need help, king? Get help? Understand me, fella? Help? More, king. Bark some more. Sure, I saw him in higher on the hill just before that rock got me. That's it, King. Keep barking. The barks were heard by Calhoun and Doc Forsythe near the tunnel. Accompanied by Trigger and Oregon, they hurried down to the wrecked building. Here, right here. Man pinned under the wreckage. How'd you get here? Caught in the storm last night. Took shelter here. Let me see what's holding you down. There's a rafter part of the roof across my back. I see you. I think we can lift her up enough to get you out. Well, be careful, Doc. Right. Take much more to bring down the rest of this roof. You two will see if you can raise this beam an inch or so. Use this hunk of wood as a lever. Here, I'll get out of your way and make room so you can work. Go ahead, Calhoun. Now you two, after. Come on, Trigger. Right. Watch it, watch it. The rest of the roof is slipped. Easy, easy now. There, now I have you. Come on, Trigger. She's going to collapse. Never find me. Wait, I'll get you out. Come on. There we are. Come on. Let go of the roof. Let go of me. Come on. Come on. narrow escape. We just got out of there in time. Hey, Doc, what's the matter with the stranger? Has he lost consciousness? Yes, he seems to have had a blow on the head. I suppose his outer clothing is inside the ruins there. It'd be pretty hard to get it out. Oh, well, uh, what'll we do with him? Get him to my place. Doc, uh, we were just going to take some samples from that mine to be assayed. Uh, ask the boys to shovel up a sack full of the ore while I get this man ready to be moved. All right, Doc. You boys go fill that sack with ore. Step lively, huh? Yeah, get her okay, right away. boss. The drama of life or death was written in Dr. Forsythe's home during the next few days. King remained at the bedside, looking up hopefully each time his master stirred. And then one morning, the Mountie opened his eyes and spoke for the first time in more than a week. The first time since the doctor had brought him to the house. King. King, old fella. Where are we, boy? I thought I heard you speaking. I'm the doctor's wife, Dr. Forsythe. He brought you here a week ago. A week ago? Oh, I remember. Sleeping in a cabin on the side of Rock Mountain, awakened by a blast, looked out the window. That's all I can remember. There was a landslide that knocked the cabin down on top of you. They got you out before it collapsed completely. What's your name? Preston. My dog's name's King. If it hadn't been for you, the doctor wouldn't have been taken in by Race Calhoun. Your husband taken in by Race Calhoun? Yes. $10,000 the doctor inherited from his brother. The poor man, he had hoped to double or triple the money so he could realize his life's ambition and build a little hospital here in Bald Rock. If it hadn't been for that, he wouldn't have listened to Calhoun in the first place and lost his money. Well, what did Calhoun do? Sold the doctor a salted gold mine. Oh. He took the doctor there and showed him a sample of ore that had gold in it. <laughs> Said a new deposit had been uncovered by the blast. The assay showed it to be good ore. So your husband bought the property? Yes, for $10,000. Where is Race Calhoun? Left town, Mr. Preston. He's over in Whitehorse with the schemers that helped him put over his deal. Whitehorse, eh? Oh, uh, 
You called me Mr. Preston. Yes, you told me a few minutes ago that that was your name. Why, yes, but... Uh, where are my clothes? Well, I guess they're still buried in the ruins of the shack. Oh. The doctor put one of his nightshirts on you and said you could borrow some of his clothes when you're able to get up. If you can get your own out from beneath the smashed-up cabin, I'll clean them up for you. You and the doctor are very kind. I... Oh, oh weaker than I thought. The doctor said you can't get up for several days. Well, I've got to be out of bed by tomorrow. I have a lot to do. The sooner I get started, the better. Sergeant Preston's strength returned rapidly. But he was still weak the next day when he sat on the veranda of Dr. Forsythe's home and became acquainted with the many friends of the kindly physician who stopped to pass the time of day. Wearing the borrowed clothing of the doctors, there was nothing to show his connection with the mounted police. It was the morning of the third day when, at Preston's request, Mark Ashton and Joe Mitchell, two of the doctor's friends, joined Preston for a meeting. Right on time, gentlemen. Glad to see you. Well, you're looking almost fit again, Mr. Preston. Sure do. Hi there, King. You men don't mind. We'll sit here on the porch. It's me. One season's plenty short. It's good sense to make the most of it. I want to finish our meeting before the doctor returns from his calls. Men, he needs help. He needs lots of help. I'll do anything in the world for Doc. He can have anything I've got, <laughs> which ain't much. The same goes for me. You heard how Calhoun swindled him. That ornery polecat. If he hadn't got out of town, we'd have ridden him out on a rail. Uh, if I wasn't so dead broke, I might help by paying Doc something for all the times he's taken care of my family. Me too. You could probably find 30 or 40 men in town who are just as deeply indebted to the doctor as you are. We sure could. The trouble is, they're all broke. It's been a hard year. Those men can repay the doctor without cash. Oh, what's that? Well, I've been here in this house. I've been thinking of various ways to get back Dr. Forsythe's money. I think I have a plan that will need a lot of men to help. Well, you just tell us what's to be done, Mr. Preston. We'll get the men to do it. Get the men together and tell them we're going to work in Dr. Forsythe's tunnel. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Goodness gracious, what goes on here? Look at the strange-looking fellow that's just dropped into the studio. I must say, I've never seen anyone quite like him. He must be nine feet tall. I am nine feet two inches tall. Well, just who are you? I am the man from Mars. Goodness, just what are you doing here? Oh, just thought I'd look around. Say, what's that you've got? Oh, these are packages of the swellest breakfast cereals you ever tasted. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, to be specific. Never heard of them on Mars. Oh, gee, that's too bad. You see, folks are wild about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice down here. Oh. They're so crisp and tender. Make breakfast a real treat. Here, want to try some? Mm. Not bad. In fact, they're terrific. You bet. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. What's more, they furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. They're good for you. That's for me. Well, I must be going now. Where to? Back to Mars. Thanks for the breakfast tip. And hey... How's about my taking along those two packages? So long. (laughs) Well, sir, fellas and girls, you can be thankful that you don't live on Mars. You don't have to miss out on these swell breakfasts of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. No siree, not for a single day. So see to it that you've a supply of both delicious kinds on hand at all times. Tell Mom that wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Look for the famous big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That way, you're sure to get the original, the one and only, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. And now to continue our story. As Sergeant Preston explained his plan... Joe and Mark at first looked incredulous, then amused. They became enthusiastic and hurried to assemble the friends of Dr. Forsythe. Before the sun went down, nearly a score of willing workers had gathered on the stormy side of Rock Mountain. Some men worked with picks, others with shovels. Still others handled teams hitched to strong wagons. 
Got enough on that wagon? Follow her on out. Bring up the next wagon. Come on, boys. We'll make a dent in this old mountain before dark. Let's go then. The next day found the men working from sunrise to sunset. And each day after that, the same. By the end of several days, the tunnel in the mountainside had been greatly expanded, and the men were still at work. Then one night, in the small room which had been turned over to him during his period of convalescence, Sergeant Preston wrote a lengthy note. He read it carefully, then folded it and turned to King, lying on the floor beside the writing table. Now, King, going to fasten this to your collar. It's up to you to deliver this message, boy. What if you can do it? It's a longer trip than you ever made alone. You'll have to go all the way to Whitehorse. Now listen, King. Andy Tavish. You know Tavish. You know him well. Tavish is the man in Whitehorse. Tavish is our friend. Remember now, Tavish. <coughs> all right, fella. Go and let you out this window. On your way, boy. Go to Tavish. King understood. He knew what was expected. He leaped through the window and ran in a straight line toward the trail that headed to Whitehorse. Preston watched until the dog was swallowed by the darkness. Now we'll see what happens. It was a long, hard trip to Whitehorse, over ground that melting snows had turned to sticky mud. It was afternoon when he stood exhausted in front of a small store in Whitehorse. Shades, Loch Lomond. It's King. What's this on your collar, King? Well, may the heather never bloom again. It's a message. Tavish grinned and chuckled as he read through Sergeant Preston's note. Then he read it a second time to make sure he thoroughly understood the Mountie's strange request. When he had finished, he turned to King. Well, King, it looks like I'm to pay a visit on that newcomer, Mr. Calhoun. But first I'm going to give you a good rub down and a square meal. Then you'll rest a wee bit before starting back to your master. I'll send him a note saying that Tavish will do as requested. After King had been refreshed and started on the return trip, Tavish headed for the office Race Calhoun had established in Whitehorse. Oregon and Trigger were in the office with Calhoun. Oregon had been looking out the window. Someone's coming to see you, Calhoun. See me? It's Tavish from the store. I wonder what he wants of me. Uh, Very good day to you. Uh, Hello there, Tavish. Uh, do you mind if I step no, in? Oh, not at all. I think you know my friends. I, uh, that I do. How are you, Terry? How are you? What can I do for you? Well, I've been told that you own some mining land, but you've had no time to work it. Now, I thought maybe for a reasonable amount, I might buy into your claim, half interest, uh, let us say, and take over the work and worry uh, starting operations. Gosh, boss, it's too bad that you've... That already... I what? I, uh... I was uh, going to say it's uh, uh, too bad you don't have uh, more time to work that gold mine. Uh, Calhoun, <laughs> uh, I'm a man of few words. Now, if you'd be interested in making a deal... Tavish, I too am a man of few words. Can you raise $50,000? Well, will it buy half interest in the gold mine? It will. Well, let us have an agreement uh, in writing so you don't back out of the deal. A half interest in your gold mine for $50,000. We'll put that in writing at once. Calhoun hurriedly prepared an agreement in a firm, bold hand. It was signed by both parties and witnessed by Oregon and Trigger. Then Tavish left. Boss, you know, blame well you sold that gold mine to Doc Forsyth. Yes. <laughs> by this time, Doc Forsyth has found out that he bought some worthless property. You'll be glad to get rid of it and get his $10,000 back. Ah. Then you'll sell half interest to it to Tavish for fifty thousand, eh? Well, sure. All I got to say is this: Tavish isn't throwing fifty thousand dollars away on something he don't know about. I tell you, he's got something up his sleeve. I don't care what he's got up his sleeve, as long as he's got fifty thousand dollars on my desk when I'm ready to close the deal with him. Get ready, boys. We're we going to Bald Rock and call on Doc Forsyth as soon as I get my cash out of the strong box. Calhoun and his pals lost no time. They set out immediately and traveled through the night. It was the following day on their way to Bald Rock that they passed the mountain. Oh, 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 oh. Their eyes went wide when they saw the extensive operations. Men were digging ore and shoveling it into wagons. Loaded wagons were strung out, heading southward over a gentle rise. And empty wagons were returning over the hill from the same direction. Say, it's costing the doc plenty to hire all these men. All the confounded luck. 
He's uncovered a new vein. That's what's happened. I knew Tabby's had something up his sleeve. He must have heard about this in some way. That's why he's willing to buy part interest in this claim. And he's got you tied up to an agreement, boss. I gotta get to Doc Forsythe right away. Come on, boys. Get him. Get him. Come on. Sit right down, Mr. Calhoun. You and your friend sit right here. The doctor will be in in just a minute. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Forsythe. He's in the next room with the. The man who was hurt when that shack fell down, remember? Oh, yes, yes. How is he? Oh, he's doing fine now. He's just as good as new. I just finished cleaning and fixing up his clothes. Mm -hmm. For his sakes, he had a time getting them out of the ruins of that shack. I'll bet. Well, well, Calhoun, I'm glad to see you. Oh, howdy, Doc. Trigger in Oregon. Uh, Say, you know, Calhoun, I was sure surprised when you took $10,000 of my money for that Rock Mountain property. Yes, yes. It was a rather an absurd amount, wasn't it? It was a swindle, that's what it was. Well, now, I... But, of course, you figured on settling down in Whitehorse. I expect you were so anxious to get there, you didn't care much about things here in Bald Rock. Well, Doc, I've changed my plans. I'm coming back to Bald Rock. Yeah? Well, I, uh... I thought if you hadn't started operations on the hillside, you you might be willing to take back your $10,000 well, and call the deal off. Call it... Call it off, you say? Mm-hmm. You mean give you back that property for $10,000? Well, I think... Calhoun, that... there's enough rock in that hill to build the biggest hospital this side of the States. You saw the men at work. You saw the wagons moving the stuff. Yes, yes, Doc, of course. And now that you've begun work, why, 10000 is hardly a suitable amount. But, well, after all, Forsyth, you're a doctor. I'm not I'm... forgetting that, Calhoun. Just as soon as I get all I'll need to build my hospital, I aim to give up the work on Rock Mountain. Maybe then, if you want to buy back the place, it'll be for sale. Well, now, that's likely to take some time. Doc, I have an idea. Yep? Suppose I were to buy back that property for whatever you need to build your hospital. Oh, it'd be a lot of money, Calhoun. More than $20,000. Doc, I'm a man who likes action. And I came here prepared to close a deal. Papers are all drawn up and ready to fill in the amount. I'll pay $25,000 for the claim on Rock Mountain. Oh, that's a lot of money. Oh, Doctor, you could go right ahead and build your hospital with that much mm-hmm. money. And after all, that's what you want to do. Well, it's a good proposition, Doc. You're not a mining man, and I am. All right, Calhoun, I'll take your proposition. Good. I'll fill out the bill of sale and we'll close the deal right now. Yeah. Right, right, thing, Doc. The negotiations were quickly completed. Doc signed the property over to Calhoun, then picked up the money which had been counted out. Twenty-five thousand dollars. Look at it, honey. That's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a hospital, that's what it is. Now we can go ahead and build it, just as soon as the boys have the ground filled in and leveled for the foundation. They're almost finished with the filling in. What's that? Yep, that's right, Calhoun. You saw them hauling rocks on your way here. <laughs> Good thing we got all the rock we'll need before I sold that property back to you. Well, you might want to charge us thieving prices for it. What's he talking about, Calhoun? Wait a minute, Forsyth. Those men on Rock Mountain were hauling gold ore. Gold ore? Whatever gave you that idea? You mean to say... The only gold that was in Rock Mountain was the gold you put there with a gun. I told you it was a swindle. But I understood it. Look, I was made to think that there was gold in that Yep, so was I. But there was no gold there, Calhoun. I reckon you know that as well as I do. But I thought... You thought there was gold there just because a lot of men were working. You must have had a pretty good deal in mind to pay me $25,000 so quick. Well, I... Uh, Maybe a gent named Tavish offered to buy part interest in the gold mine. Tavish? How do you know about Tavish? Never mind how I know about him. Just take my word for it, gents. If you expect to sell part interest in a gold mine to Tavish, you'll have to produce gold ore. That's right, boss. That's in the agreement. Oh, that's it. Now I understand the whole thing. You cooked up a deal with Tavish. If that hadn't been for him, I never would have suspected there was gold there. And if you hadn't been a crook at heart, you wouldn't have told Tavish the land was yours to sell. Well, you're not going to get away with it, Doc. I'll take back that cash. Oh, no, you won't. <coughs> Maybe this gun will have something to say about that. Or this gun. Now hand it over, Doc, or I'll tell the boys to help themselves. And they might get rough about it. Don't try it. Hey, who's that? Mounty. You. Put those guns away or I'll arrest you for attempted robbery. You won't arrest anyone. Cover the Mountie, boys. You heard that, mister. You're covered. Hey, you're the man we hauled out of that shack that caved in. That's right. You'd better put those guns away. Don't you do it, boys. Keep him covered in the doctor and his wife as well. I'm taking back my money. Calhoun, you deliberately set out to swindle Dr. Forsyth, and you didn't stop there. If you'd been honest and told Tavish that the doctor owned the Rock Mountain property, you wouldn't be in your present situation. 
You're a victim of your own scheme. I'm not in any situation. The guns are on my side. You helped the doctor rescue me from that shack, and for that I'm willing to give every possible benefit. Get out of here and go to Whitehorse, and we'll have no further trouble. Maybe we'd better... Hold that gun steady, Oregon. I'll see if the Mountie's armed. You won't take my advice, Calhoun, so you'll have to take what comes. Come on, King. You're in on this. This is for you, Calhoun. No! Look out, that dog. I'll take that gun. Look out, dog. That's it, King. Get him. Get him, boy. It was a furious battle, though a short one. King charged one of the gunmen while the Mountie ducked low and tackled the other. Calhoun staggered, dazed with a sharp blow to the jaw. By the time he regained his balance, the fight was over. That'll hold you. Take this dog off. Take him off. I'm King. I'm guard, boy. Wait. Wait. Listen. Now I'm holding a gun, Calhoun, and you'll do the listening. What I said a few minutes ago still goes. Get out of this house and out of town. If I hear of any more shady deals on your part, you'll get no leniency. That goes for you, too. I want no trouble. I'll go as soon as you give me my gun. You'll go without your gun. How about that, King? I'm going, I'm going. Me, too. Wait for your gun. You want no more of this deal. What about you, Calhoun? I gather from what you said, Doc, that you know about an agreement that I had with Tavish. <laughs> I sure do. Tavish uh, won't be interested in buying half interest in the tunnel on Rock Mountain. Calhoun, you can write this off as a swindle that backfired. Uh, I guess I can. Oh, thank goodness he's gone. Oh, Sergeant Preston, I, I, I don't know how we can ever thank you. Calhoun sure got what he deserved, thanks to you. Well, Doc, you got what you deserved, thanks primarily to King. <laughs> yes, King, old fellow, thanks to the way you summoned help when I was trapped. Thanks to your trip to White Horse with a message for Tavish, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Say, if you can't make up your mind which you like best, Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice, here's what you do. Don't miss out on either kind of these delicious, ready-to-serve cereals. Always keep a supply of both kinds on hand. Eat Quaker popped wheat one time, Quaker popped rice the next. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Be sure to look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's the only way to get the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the Phantom Gang. This exciting adventure began when King and I were sent to Whitehorse to hunt a gang of killers. Well, we soon found out we were up against a very clever group of men. And if it hadn't been for King, they would have added me to their list of victims. I hope you'll like it. Be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.